Okay, welcome back to American Agenda. As President Biden welcomes the U.S. Conference of Mayors to the White House this afternoon, his relations with some mayors in his own party have begun showing signs of strain. That's right. Especially with the uh, migrant crisis happening. This as a result of growing dysfunction at the southern border. That's right. And Newsmax chief White House correspondent James Rosen has more on the story. Greetings from Chicago, which right now embodies the hopes and aspirations of the Democratic Party and the Biden-Harris ticket, but also their anxieties. Chicago native Minyan Moore, a veteran campaign operative and power broker, currently serving as chair of the Democratic Convention this year, welcomed reporters and logistics specialists on Thursday to the United Center for a walkthrough of the convention space. The Windy City last hosted the Democrats in 1996, the Republicans back in 1960. Municipal leaders here say the social services system in Chicago Chicago, a so-called sanctuary city, is buckling under the arrival in recent months of some 35,000 Latin American migrants, most of them bussed here by Republican Governor Greg Abbott of Texas in protest of the conditions under which cities and towns along the southwest border have struggled for decades. That has led Democratic mayors to plead openly for President Biden to do more to fix the border and support cities like this one. As buses continue to arrive in the city of Chicago and all over the country, the type of chaos that has been administered has left many of our local economies under a tremendous amount of duress. Without significant intervention from the federal government, this mission will not be sustained. Vice President Harris addressed the U.S. Conference of Mayors in Washington yesterday, and President Biden will host the group in the East Room this afternoon. The record number of migrants illegally crossing the border will figure prominently in those discussions. A top immigration lawyer told Newsmax these problems cannot be fixed by any one set of leaders in any one geographic location. Chicago was given an issue by Texas, by Texas busing individuals into the Chicago area or busing individuals to the New York area. So the influx of immigrants just didn't naturally happen in these areas. It was something that was exasperated by a Republican governor. The solution to this is for them to work together towards solutions. But the bigger issue is for Congress to work together to pass some type of comprehensive immigration reform that addresses the needs of the American people. And you'll see those remarks from President Biden and then from the visiting mayors in the 3 p.m. Eastern time hour. Back to you. All right, James Rosen, thanks so much. Looks like the Windy City is living up to its name out there. It certainly is. You look cold cold there. Okay. (laughs) Joining us now to discuss this is guest faculty for the Leadership Institute, Erica Donalds, and New York City Councilwoman Vicki Palladino. Vicki, let's start with you. Wow, starting to hear some dissension in the ranks of Democrat mayors asking the federal government, asking Joe Biden to actually do something in the border. I thought I'd never hear that. Why should anybody be surprised? Is this not an election year? (laughs) Uh, They are finally listening to the overwhelming majority of uh, normal folk who live throughout these cities, Democrat or Republican, and maybe they're finally doing what they're supposed to do and listen to the people. So it doesn't really surprise me much that they're pivoting on this, uh, this being 2024 in an election year. Yeah, interesting points there, Vicki. I want to get on to this here, Erica. New York Governor Kathy Hochul is also planning a visit to Washington, D.C. to plead with the Biden administration to restore the rule of law at our border. Now, Governor Hochul says that sanctuary New York City faces a burden in sheltering thousands of migrants. We know that some kids were recently kicked out of a school. The governor is also allocating, get this, $2.4 billion and pulling from the state's emergency reserves to address the crisis. Erica, what it comes down to, however, is that American taxpayers' money is being used to take care of people who are breaking the law. To me, that's like end of story. I know there are many nuances to it. But how can this continue and how is it continuing under this administration? Well, unfortunately, although the headlines really focused on those students being displaced from the school building the other day at the Leadership Institute, we've been following this closely because resources have continued to be diverted away from American students in our public schools. You're talking about over a million students who have flooded our cities and our public schools with great needs. They have social issues, they have uh, language issues, and they're requiring a lot of additional resources. And those resources are desperately needed by American students who are already very far behind when it comes to the learning loss from COVID and really decades of abysmal 
proficiency and academic performance in our schools. So it's not just a drain on cities and states when it comes to public service, our parks, and things like that. I'm sure that Vicki knows very well. It's also a drain on every single school system, especially those in our urban areas where the most disadvantaged students are getting the short end of the stick. Yeah, the strain is absolutely immense here. And mm -hmm. I know there's so many inner city school districts around the country with the buildings that were built so long ago. Some of them, we've talked about this, they have asbestos in them and it becomes right. exposed. They need money to fix it. They can't get it. But miraculously, billions can appear here to house these illegal migrants coming in. And these poor students, their families, they are the uh, victims in all this here. And this is a very topical question here, Vicki. I want to ask you, New York City Mayor Eric Adams, he's still defending that decision to house migrants at a high school right here in New York City. He's receiving some backlash for it. Let's listen to what he had to say in a recent interview. One young girl said it clearly. She said, wait a minute. We did remote learning for a whole year. We can't do it for one day. Remote learning. It's so hard for no, them. Oxymoron, an oxymoron. An oxymoron. Yeah, he's yes. defending that. It is. I was just going to say exactly what you said. That's an oxymoron. Yeah. <laughs> Remote learning means not learning at all. We've lived through two and a half years of, of remote learning, and it has proven to be an absolute failure at every level. Our kids are miles behind uh, other students throughout the world, and, and I'm sure in different red states right here in the United States. Uh, because uh, they did not back down to all these mandates the way New York did and the other blue cities did. Um, this is not uh, a, a sustainable thing. One day, just think about this. They were able to flip a switch in one day and take our kids out of a high school and put them, bam, on remote learning. How do you think that happened? That happened back in September when our principals and superintendents got emails from the DOE instructing them to start to get your kids ready for remote learning should we, it need to happen again. A lot of people don't know that, but I have a lot of insight into the DOE. I know a lot of school teachers and I know a lot of principals who did receive uh, emails such as this. So them being able to fit, yeah. pivot to remote learning should scare the hell, heck out of everybody because we're in we're in serious uh, we're in bad shape here. Mm -hmm. It is and now it's proven remote learning is disastrous yes. for the ch children's right. developments there. Erica Donalds, Vicky Paladina, Paladino, excuse me. Uh, we thank you both for coming on here. Appreciate it. Thank you. Stay warm. Have a great weekend. Yeah, you too. Thank you.